she, she was terrific. Umberto Eco's first novel was a surprise international bestseller. The Name of the Rose is and was a complex scholarly mystery by an Italian professor who studies signs and symbols. It was not a book its publishers expected to sell over nine million copies. His second novel was also both critically acclaimed and commercially successful. Now he has published a book of satirical essays called Misreadings, and he joins me now. I just, I want to turn to other things, but this is based on, on a series of uh, parodies that you wrote back in, what, 59? Early six, 60s, early, early 60s, 60s yeah. yes. They were literary parodies of pastiche yeah, right. and erudite jokes yeah. uh, in, a, in, a, in a serious uh, literary journal. Uh, just, just, a, just to give an example, it is like what happens when, a, when somebody sends a copy of the Bible to a publisher, <laughs> right? And you said, I must say that the first few hundred pages of the manuscript really hooked me. Action-packed, they have everything today's reader want in a good story. Sex, lots of it, including adultery, sodomy, incest, also murder, war, massacres, and so on. The Sodom and Gomorrah chapter with the transvestites putting the make on the angels is worthy of uh, Rabelais. The Noah stories are pure Jules Verne. The escape from Egypt cries out to be turned into a major, and on and on and on and on. <laughs> that kind of parody. Let me, I want to come back to you and all the writers. Tell me what is going on in your country. Uh, when I tried to explain uh, my friend American, uh, uh, well, I found this example. Right. Suppose that now, 1993, America is still governed by Harry Truman. Yes. That is exactly what happened in Italy. Mr. Andreotti and his people went in power more or less at the time right. in which Harry Truman was the president right. of Christian the Democrats. So, and they remained. Uh, there was this legend that in Italy we changed government uh, every six months. Uh, absolutely untrue. There was a sort of uh, merry-go-round of uh, governments, but it was the same people, the same political class, for obvious reasons, because uh, Italy was a crucial element uh, in the NATO, in the anti-communist uh, front, so we had the uh, the artificial situation of a country with the same political class in power for 50 years. Right. That is unnatural. That cannot bring but to corruption and everything. Then, uh, the situation has changed. It has been enough that the public prosecutor has started an, an inquiry, and like an avalanche, everything went to... to, to into Here's the what they're right finding out for anyone who hasn't really followed this. Scandal everywhere, paybacks everywhere. Everybody was skimming off. The whole system, one city after another city, politicians turned out to be co been corrupted. Former prime ministers, Craxi and others. You've got Andriotti now accused, accused of being sort of in cahoots with the mafia. This is a prime minister. And well, people but are I saying... Find, I find pretty nice that uh, in a country, finally, people have the courage to... to well, to, to, to examine the whole uh, of, of the situation, probably there are other countries in this world in which there is a lot of corruptions, uh, and right. there is not such a complete, uh, I wouldn't use the, the word uh, uh, revolution because it is not a revolution, but in any case, uh, you see, an entire country is deciding to, to, to put uh, everything upside down. Right. The, the only problem we have in this moment is that this political class has not as yet understood the real uh, uh, purport of the, uh, of the situation. What, the what country is more mature than uh, its uh, political, political class. class. It's more That's mature than its political class. class. So what will emerge as a consequence of all this? All these investigations, all these discoveries, all these scandals? All what, 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 emerge, uh, what will be the new Italy? Well, the new Italy will be uh, probably, I, I, I hope, uh, with a new electoral uh, system, the problem is to uh, destroy what has been called the partitocracy, a partitocracy, which is a possible form of democracy, but not the, the only one, a democracy in which the parties were more powerful uh, than the parliament and, and then the government. Uh, a new electoral system will transform, I hope, that's my, my, my view, uh, the old parties in clubs able to produce uh, uh, for election 
groups with the program, and, and, and the Italian will vote for those groups, for those persons, for those uh, programs. Until now, they voted for a party. Mm. A party meant an ideology, a party meant a sort of family, father, mother. Mm. As a, and it parties became too much important. Uh, most of that corruption has not been uh, uh, corruption for personal uh, purposes, but for making the party to, to, to grow and right. uh, to survive. That was abnormal. Uh, uh, certainly it was abnormal. I repeat, because for 50 years there was no uh, alternative. While in France or in, or in Great Britain they, there was the normal alternative be between conservative uh, and uh, social democrats and in, in Germany uh, too. In Italy it didn't happen. So it's an abnormal situation. Now it's changing. In which way? I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. In some way certainly. In some way. So there will be something new in the next future. I hope. Yeah. But nothing, just a, a, a better and more effective government, not any change of political alignment or anything like that. Well, you, you see, the new, uh, this new appointed government is at least uh, um, the first example of, of a government uh, designed by the, by the uh, president of the, um, of the minister without bargaining too much with the parties and selecting person according to their competence and not to the fact that they were backed or not by the parties. It's already a, a, a small uh, change, but uh, as a first step right. in this uh, evolution, it could be satisfactory. But we have to see what this government makes in the, in the, next, uh, in the next weeks to, to work for uh, an electoral reform and so, and so forth. Moreover, it's uh, since uh, uh, October that I am out of Italy. F first, I, I was teaching in France, now here in the United States. So I am following all those things with, uh, with a strange uh, uh, sensation of defamiliarization and uh, participation at the same time. Tell me about, uh, what you didn't start writing or think of yourself as a writer until what? You sat down to write The Name of the Rose? I, 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 I finished it that I was... Uh, I was 48, so I am a young writer yes, in sure. this sense. <laughs> you can say that this kind of stuff were uh, literary, uh, literary experiments, because yeah. even, even parody is a literary genre. So I was making uh, what people call creative literature, a, a term that I don't like even before. But okay, until the age of 48, I considered myself a scholar and uh, I didn't think of myself as uh, uh, a, possible, a possible novelist. I, I don't belong to this kind of scholars that uh, spend their life dreaming of the moment they could write a poem or a novel. No, I was very happy like that. Suddenly, uh, uh, as I said in my first interview, uh, reached the age of 50 instead of escaping with a carless girl, I, I wrote a novel. That's right. that's uh, okay. In other words, you <laughs> said a lot of people reach the age of 50 and they escape with a chorus girl <laughs> or they do something with their life. No. What you did is wrote a novel. Well, it was a new change, a new challenge. Were you surprised by its success? But obviously, it be it obviously, so obviously, yes. I, I met uh, two days uh, ago this uh, great woman who is uh, Helen Wolf, uh, my, my, my publisher of the right. Helen Kurt Wolf right. uh, collection for Arcut Brace. And we remember the day we met uh, and she said, I like your book, we can try to do it, but you see, uh, 4,000 copies, okay, okay I 4, promise 000. you an advance on 4,000 copies because I don't believe it's possible to sell more of a book like that. And <laughs> how many did it sell? But in America, I don't remember. But yeah, overall, so seven. But the figure uh, you said nine million, right. ten million. You know, because half of the world don't pay right, so you don't know how much they <laughs> they, right. they, yeah. they, you know, they no. sold. So, so it's a, never it's seen a the sort. <laughs> yeah. How much it, they, they they sold in China? You really don't know. Uh, yeah. Now, did the second book do as well as Name of the Rose? Yes, it was critically was praised. Comparatively, uh, we consider that it's only four years, while the, the, man, the, the, the Name of the Rose is uh, 12 years. Right. Comparatively, okay. it's going... Uh, well, it's, uh, yeah. now, are you writing another novel now? I, I, 
eight years passed from the second to the uh, from the first, first to, to the, the second. second. So uh, I, I want to have eight years uh, for a, for a possible third, and the rest remains uh, remains a secret. Yeah. Uh, What's mind. the joy for you? What is it you like about writing? Uh, I, I think that the the the, the impulse to narrate uh, is a, a natural human impulse. I think that we we make uh, children in order to tell them f fairy tales. Yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful to, to tell uh, a, a story. So I think it's, uh, it's one of the most uh, natural impulse like, like uh, food, sex and those. So it, it's beautiful to narrate freely. To write a novel, ah, that it means, it means to build up a cathedral yeah. uh, with uh, a lot of work and not every moment uh, is uh, of full joy. There are, there are also moments of suffering yeah. and pain. And it, suffering and pain in writing for you? In certain moments in which you don't know where to go, you, you feel that you, you, you have in a blind alley and then the joy comes later when, 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 when you succeed yeah. in solving yeah. that. I, I thought of my last novel as a sort of navigation in, in which at every chapter I was at, at, the, at the Cape uh, the, uh, of good hope, good hope right. and I had to double the cape. And under the moment I didn't double the cape, I, I, I was I was really suffering. Uh, since there were uh, uh, 120 uh, chapters in that book, for 120, um, but subdivided in 10 major sections, for all of those 10 sections, I had to double. Uh, the Cape, and it, it was uh, it was uh, quite an, an ordeal. Uh, but uh, that's uh, is a part of the of the uh, of the game. You have said before, which I found fascinating, is that there were two things you wanted to do when you were 21 or 22. One was to write a book, which would outlive you, mm. and the other thing was to have a child, yes. which would outlive yes. you. Yes, yes. I, I had two two children. And 20 books, so, um, I, I, <laughs> so I, I feel uh, I feel all of your desires. I feel uh, realized. I could have had uh, uh, 20 uh, children and two books, but uh, I think for the balance of the world population, is better. Like, like, like Do you like, have like time this. to stay up in the field of semiotics? I continue to to teach to, to teach. Yeah. Uh, that 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 too. Is Writing a, is doesn't detract from that. Hmm? Writing doesn't detract from it, or mm, no, no. I, I I think I am a. A, a polychronic person, you know that uh, people uh, split into monochronic and polychronic. Yeah, the monochronic one are able to make only one thing at a time, yeah. and otherwise the, the polychronic must make yeah. several things at a time, otherwise they, 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 cannot, uh, they cannot work. And so there is a sort of continuous exchange among the, the things you, you the, the are things that I, I, I tell in, in a class to my students and then they can they are useful to me for for, 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 for a novel, let's say, or or vice versa. So I don't, I, I have the impression to do always the same uh, thing, disguised under uh, different uh, clothes. Why semiotics for you? What was it about uh, se symbols semi that so? Uh, semiotics is, a f for me, not, not for everybody, is, a, is the contemporary form of philosophy, considering yeah. The human beings as communicating animals yeah. to, to give a, an easy definition. Marshall Blonsky's been here yes, uh, and uh, talked a lot about semiotics on this pro on this program. W and, and next, you continue teaching, and, and do you ever do you come here to visit a lot? I mean, what do you think of America, and what do you think from afar of our new president? But uh, uh, what do you think? What I think of America is, is difficult because it's. 25 years that I come so frequently in, in this country, for instance, I feel at home in, in New York, uh, and so I have no more this uh, innocence. <laughs> uh, for then you asked about in the new the, the new, new administration. I'm almost out of well, time, but I, I, are Europeans I, I, and th uh, the European uh, were uh, pro Clinton during the the yeah. election. They huh? wanted change. Th th insofar as they could have an, an opinion, the, the general uh, feeling uh, was uh, uh, pro, uh, pro Clinton. So I, 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 I'm, expecting, I'm expecting a lot of, of things from this person. Umberto Eco's Misreadings is a uh, collection of parodies written uh, through um, in the early 50s, in the late 50s and early 60s. Pleasure to have you on the broadcast. Bye-bye. Thank you. Stay with me one second.
We thank you for joining us this evening. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Former Secretary of State Cyrus Vance will be here talking about uh, what's going on in Bosnia. He and Lord David Owen have been responsible for most of the negotiations that have taken place there. We may see some kind of breakthrough. Questions will remain, but we look forward to that. See you tomorrow night.